am the uh, first speaker. I'm the only non-NEPSAP coach on here today. I coach, uh, I'm the head coach at Fairfield Prep in Connecticut. And um, prior to coaching at Fairfield Prep, I spent some time working for uh, Greg Horenda at UMass Lowell. That was my first job out of college as an assistant coach. Um, I was a student manager in college for four years at Quinnipiac for Tom Moore. Um, like I said, then I went to UMass Lowell. And then I got hired back at Quinnipiac as the director of basketball operations, Coach Moore. Fortunately, hired me back. And then I spent two years working for Scott Burrell at Southern Connecticut State University as an assistant coach. And I got out of the business to run a nonprofit and then this opportunity at Fairfield Prep um, worked itself out and I'm lucky to be the head coach there now. Uh, this will be uh, two years that I've been there. Um, this next season will be my third. So my topic today is going to be man-to-man uh, -man defense development. So I'm just going to share my screen here. All right. So Again, if, if, if just to remind everybody, if anybody has questions or if there's any issues with um, any audio uh, or, or anything going on, please feel free to, uh, to just throw, throw, uh, throw a comment in the chat there. But so, yeah, my, my topic is man-to-man -man defensive development. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that we did this year. Uh, it was a big year for me learning as a head coach. And I'm going to talk about some ways that we kind of transformed our season. And I learned a ton about our defense and and creating the identity for our team. So um, some of the stuff might seem basic, uh, to be completely honest. I spoke on a clinic about two weeks ago and uh, the guy that spoke before me was, was awesome. Um, he had like a ton of like complex, really great stuff. And, and I felt kind of silly going after him just because I felt like my presentation was basic, but um, it works for us. And you know, I think there's something to be said about the stuff that we do and how it, how it can help your team. So um, before I get into that, um, I want to talk about the, Two things. Uh, number one, the most important thing I've learned as a head coach. Um, when I first got the job at prep, I probably was like every other coach out there. I was, um, I was obviously super excited and I had a million thoughts running through my mind. I was like, okay, what do I want to run on offense? What, I, what do I want to want to run on defense? Uh, what do I want to, uh, you know, what, what what do we want to do for this ball screen coverage? What do we want to do for, you know, our fast break offense? You know, I had all these different ideas. I'm writing them all down. I'm putting them all together. And I think the quickest thing I learned was all that stuff is really important. But the most important thing to me is that my players or our players at Fairfield Prep believe in me and our staff 100%. And I think that's really important. I think that's something that we don't talk about enough as coaches because there is going to be ups and downs in a season. And your players have to believe in you. So, like, when you, you know, we don't usually win, you know, every game we play. Um, actually, some of these coaches on here have incredible records um, the past couple of years, you know, but it's rare that we have the perfect season. So, we're going to be, there's going to be a point in the season for most of us where we, you know, we've lost a couple in a row and we have to come into practice the next day and we have to tell our team, all right, this is what we need to do to turn this around. And they need to believe in you. Um, same thing, like in a game situation, if you're down with four minutes to go, if you're down 10 and you're in, you're, you know, you're in a huddle and a timeout and you're trying to tell your team what to do to come back, they have to believe that what you're saying is going to work. And if they believe it, they're going to go out there and fight for you. So that was something that for me, I just learned really quickly. Like if these guys can believe in me as a coach, that's the first step. And if, if I can get them to buy in, I can get them to really trust me. Um, you know, we're going to find some success. And, you know, the question might be, okay, how do you, how do you ha make that happen? I think it's a bunch of things. I think it's obviously coaching them really hard. Um, being able to uh, have a relationship with them off the court, obviously winning some games and, and then seeing some of the things that you're doing is working helps as well. But um, again, it just was, it's a, it's a huge emphasis of mine is like making sure these guys believe in me um, every single day and believe in, in what we're, we're, what we're teaching them. Um, next thing I'm going to talk about is the biggest mistake I made as a head coach. So when I got the job, I was really lucky. I had nine seniors. Um, none of them were like really like basketball guys. Um, a couple of them, they're only sports basketball. Um, but the majority of them, they played other sports and they had a level of competitiveness and a level of toughness to them that I didn't really need to instill in them. Um, again, they believed in me, which helped, but and, and it worked for us in year one. 
I lost those nine guys. And in year two, I had young guys that were more serious basketball players. So I just think, okay, we're going to, we're going to be even better now because we have these guys that are just basketball guys. They're skilled and they're young, but they're, they play basketball year round. And I didn't do a good job creating that identity that I talked about of being a, a tough, hard nosed team that plays really hard. I just assumed that it was going to happen. Um, and we started the season two and five. And if I could go back and do those first seven games, that first month and a half of the season all over again, I would do it because I think I made a huge mistake. Um, but after we were two and five, like everybody else here does, you know, after, after a loss, you're, you're contemplating everything, you want to change everything. We decided we needed to change our identity and create the identity that I should have created from day one. And it helped us. You know, we ended up finishing the season in our last 15 games, 11 and four. But that's a mistake I'll never make again as a head coach is trying to play catch up and creating our team identity because it's something that has to be done from from day one. Um, and it's something that I did not do this year. So um, just a couple things uh, that I've learned as a head coach, I think they translate to any level. Again, players must believe in you and your staff and create your identity from day one. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about our defense. So just to give you kind of um, some background on this again. So we were two and five. Um, as a coaching staff, we were just like kicking ourselves, trying to figure out how we're going to turn the season around because two and five could turn into two and eight to, to three and uh, three and 14 to, you know, five and 15 real quick. Um, we we're like, we can't let that happen. So, you know, we had a meeting. Um, we said, okay, we're going to start tomorrow. We're going to just, you know, we're going to create our man to man defensive identity that, that's really, really tough and really, really, you know, uh, really, really physical that, that teams don't want to play yet. So, these are our big defensive points of emphasis that we talked about. Um, first one that everybody has is non-negotiable, all right? Uh, everybody has to talk. Um, if you don't talk, you know, it's hard for me to trust you and, and play you. And, and, and with these defensive points of emphasis, again, I think they're easy to say. Um, as we got into this, uh, this talk here, um, I'm going to talk more about, uh, how, how, okay, it's easy to say I want my team to talk, but how do you make them talk, especially high school kids? How do you get high school kids to talk? Um, you know, and, and again, how do you get your guys to do all of these things here? So, uh, again, first, first one, um, is talk. All right. Second one, contain the ball. Uh, we talk about this a lot. Like, you know, we, we talk about rotations and we talk about help defense, but we also talk about the fact that, um, there's no help defense for, uh, there's no help defense for a straight line drive, right? If you guys get beat to the rim, you know, I, I don't think your, your rotations even matter. Um, so you have to contain the ball. Uh, make teams can take contested jump shots. Uh, make multiple plays, right? So if you can help, and then you got to recover, then you got to box out, then you got to go get the ball. Um, so on every possession, you have to be able to make multiple plays. You can't just make one play and then think you did your job. Um, bump ball cutters. We just want to be a physical team that's just like a pain to play against, and just that the teams don't want to cut through a lane um, against us, and teams get worn out as the game goes on. Take charges. Um, it's a huge emphasis of ours. You know, you'll see in some of the videos what we do in practice to get our team to take charges. Um, it's something we talk about every day, and it's something that our kids believe can help us win games, and, and we talk about how it can change the whole momentum of the game. Um, make aggressive mistakes. You know, no one's going to do anything perfect. Uh, we try not to have the kids overanalyze what they're doing. We have a couple rules on defense that we, that we live by. But we always talk about, like, if you're going to make a mistake, have it be, uh, have it be an aggressive mistake. Don't have it be a, um, a mistake that is soft and, and it's just going to lead to, like, more bad things happening. Um, limit teams to one shot, uh, which is, you know, self-explanatory, and then kills. Um, I was watching a game uh, early this year before our season started. I think it was Xavier. Um, and they, they, the commentators, the guys doing the game, were talking about how Xavier charts their kills and how one kill is getting three stops on defense in a row. So we talked about it and our guys bought into to getting kills so much that, you know, our bench celebrations were, you know, two guys doing some skit uh, once we got three stops in a row, like we we're you know, about one guy killing the other guy. And, um, and, and they, just, they just bought into it completely, which is really cool. Um, and, and, you know, we talked a ton about it. Like if we can get multiple kills, throughout a game where you can build a lead and we can keep a lead, right? If you can stop a team three times in a row. Okay, so again, those are our points of emphasis. Easy to say. I think the harder thing to do is, is make your kids believe in them. 
Uh, so what I've done is I've kind of broken this down into three phases. Uh, first phase is uh, individual defense. Um, we're going to go and then we'll go into team defense and we'll go into rebounding and getting the ball. So again, some of this stuff might sound so basic. I'm going to explain some of these drills. I have some drills, um, some film on some of the drills. And, and again, if anybody has any questions, throw them into the uh, Q&A at the bottom or throw them into the chat and we'll, uh, we'll get to them at the end. All right, so first one, the drill that we've done since we were like six years old uh, at basketball camp is a zigzag drill. Um, again, really simple, really basic. What we do is um, we, we, you know, we partner the kids up, line in each corner, um, diagonal from each other. So you're going on opposite ends. Uh, the offensive guys going full speed, the defensive guys, uh, you know, just zigzagging. Uh, what we do is we have a coach in each corner. So you know, we have the offensive guy going full speed. We have the defensive guy who's zigzagging, yelling out ball. We put a coach in each corner. Um, if a defensive guy stands up, if uh, the offensive guy isn't going hard enough, if the defensive guy isn't yelling ball loud enough, um, if they don't sprint across when they get to the end, we just tell our assistant coaches, you don't even have to say anything, just raise your hand. And they raise their hand, we blow the whistle, and we reset the clock to 10 minutes. And we did this on day one of that, that practice where we tried to change our identity. And we did it, um, you know, they, they started and it just, we, we were obviously trying to make a point that day. So 30 seconds in, we blew the whistle and we started it. And then three minutes went by and, and we, were, and we were nitpicking that day because we were trying to, trying to change our team identity. And three minutes went by, we blew the whistle, we set it to 10 minutes. And it's grueling because we have, you know, 14 guys in practice. You're not really getting much of a break. You're going zigzag all the way to the end, sprint across, you know, zigzag back. And, you know, um, we went to this drill, to be honest, almost every, every day, if not every other day. And, you know, we just could kind of would feel the pulse of our team because we're always trying to balance the, like, let's, let's keep this toughness. Let's keep, keep what we're doing. But obviously we're trying to preserve our bodies as the season goes on. Um, but again, it's, it's, a, it's a mental toughness drill to be able to kind of to be tired and to be able to do what we're asking them to do for 10 minutes straight. And it's easy. We hold them accountable. They know that. They don't want that clock to, you know, once they've done five minutes in straight of defensive slides, they don't want that thing to get reset to 10 minutes. So, again, a uh, real simple zigzag drill that we go to uh, pretty much every day or every other day. Uh, our next drill is our one-on-one -on -one full court, and I have some film on this. Uh, but basically, well, again, 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, it's a little bit of exaggerated of a drill. On um, the offensive guys, we're starting under the rim. Uh, we're going sideline to sideline, um, full speed to half court. And then once it hits half court, it's live one on one. And we don't even restrict the court. I know some people restrict the court to make it more realistic for, for the offensive guy. But for this, we're just like, just play one on one. And as a defensive player, figure out how to stop them, right? Just figure out how to get a stop. Um, and if they get scored on, they do a sprint. You'll see them, they do a suicide on the sideline. We have one coach that's in charge of that. You know, if they get scored on, they, they just, they jog back and then they run a suicide. Um, if they give up an offensive rebound, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have them jog back or run a suicide. If they got to stop, they don't have to run. So again, nobody wants to have to run the, uh, you know, run the suicide after playing defense full court and after doing that 10 minutes zigzag drill. So they're gonna they're gonna buy in. They're like, I need to stop this guy. Um, so here you'll see um, some film. Turn this volume off. And again, some you know, we got guys. It looks like guys are standing around. Um, we have 14 guys in practice. Uh, usually this is right after the zigzag drill. So you know, we 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 believe in it. Like we believe in these guys. Like need to be able to stop each other. So um, you know. Guy scores there, so you'll see on the second group, you'll see on the lower half of the screen there, um, you have guys running. And, and the good thing about these drills, guys, that um, you know, as we go here, is you you can you can modify them and, and you can kind of figure out, you know, you can be a, really hard on them some days, or you can just say, okay, we need to we need to get our our toughness um, fixed in today, so we're just going to get through them. But if you know you're going through a bad stretch, you need to make a point with your team. You could you could make each drill last as long as you want it to last. And and even if the guy misses a jump shot there, you could just call him out and say, "Hey, wasn't a good enough shot contest," and just kind of give guys a hard time. But um, you know, it, it makes you uh, makes you uh, makes the kids believe and makes them uh, really have to work to to get what you want out of them. Uh, this one here, one on one half court box. 
I took this from Quinnipiac with me. Um, the first day I ever saw this drill, I was a freshman manager and I'd never been in a college practice before. And I just couldn't believe it uh, because guys were, guys were shot. And uh, it's old school, one-on-one -on -one half court box, um, line at half court, uh, coaches up there uh, with a couple basketballs next to the line. One guy's in the hole, usually like at the free throw line. And the coach flips their ball to a guy at half court, and he just dribbles full speed at the defender who's in the hole. And the defender has to stop him. And to get a stop, we do, we say you have to do three things. Uh, you have to, number one, you have to control the ball. Uh, so you can't let the guy just drive right past you. You have to contest the shot. You have to box out. You have to rebound. And you, we have two coaches on each side. You have to throw a good outlet pass. Um, and then with this drill, we usually say you got to get three stops to get out. But again, depending on what kind of practice you need, if you need a more laid back practice, you could say, hey, you just got to get two. Um, but if you want to have a tough, grueling practice, you, you could say you need to get three in a row. And we tell our offense, we say keep scoring. So you, 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 get, you drive by, you make a layup, get the offense a rebound, put it back up. Put it back up again, put it back up again. Put it back up 12 times in a row. And make that defensive guy find the will to push you, move you out of the way and just get the ball and outlet it. And again, it becomes a, a bit of a mental toughness battle. Um, but guys believe in, you know, like, the more we were doing this stuff, it was like, okay, if we, no one's going to score on us, we can really beat anybody. So, um, you know, we really like this drill. The kids really buy into it. You know, again, and the other, the other thing about it is you could be a, you know, for us, we could be a five foot seven guard and you could have our, you know, you could have your two stops and then the next guy in line could be a six foot seven big guy. And we let the guys, they could throw it to the coach and they could go post up. And now, now you're, you know, you're, you're a guard. You have to battle a big guy and figure out a way to stop on box him out, get the ball. Um, all things that could happen in the game. Okay, so those are our three main um, individual, uh, individual uh, defensive drills. Um, sorry, let me go back here. Uh, uh, our three main uh, defensive drills there uh, for individuals. Um, Next, we're going to go into team defense. Um, you know, obviously for us, like I talked about in the beginning, we talked about containing the ball. So we put almost more of an emphasis on, okay, you got to be able to play man-to-man -man defense one-on-one -on -one because if you just get blown by, I mean, there's only so much team defense can do, right? But if we can put some resistance on the ball, you know, now we have our team defense. And, and one of the things you'll see, you know, we have some basic rules, like we try not to help from the strong side corner. Uh, we have a few things that we emphasize, but I try not to go crazy giving rules to our kids. Um, I try to just make them to react what happens because, you know, if, if you if you set it up so much in, in, in a practice, it's going to be different in the game. And, and if we can get them to believe in like just I, I saw one clinic um, actually spoke at our last clinic and I think he used a term like just being able to put out a fire. Like just instead of saying, hey, if you're in this position, you have to help here. Just have the mindset of, OK, I got to put out this fire. I got to put out that fire. And it's going to be different every time, um, especially in the game. So here's what we do for our team defense. Um, some of these drills, I think, are a little um, staged, um, but they're just kind of trying to work on the concepts that we want to work on. Um, first ones are three and three, help and recover, and I have video on this. Um, basically, when we go into our team defense uh, segment of practice, we split the, the teams up into groups of four. So we'll have, like, our white team, our red team, and our yellow team. Um, and, and that's kind of how we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through all these drills and they'll be kind of rotating and playing all against each other. Um, and they, 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 they love it. They get competitive with it. Um, you know, they think that, you know, when we put a group of guys together that they're the best, you know, best defensive team. And we kind of, kind of saw the mindset of our guys change as we started doing this stuff. It's great. Um, but okay. Three on three, help and recover three minutes on the clock. So each team's going to be in the hole for three minutes. Um, we have the offensive guy at half court. Uh, we have an on-ball defender kind of on his hip, so he's at a disadvantage. And basically, the emphasis we're trying to get in this drill is we're trying to get our guys to give strong, aggressive, loud help. Um, again, it's a little bit staged, which you'll see, but we're working on, okay, you need to help strong, aggressive, and with your voice. And if you can do those three things and make the offensive guy hesit hesitant just a little bit, you know, the, the, the on-ball defender will be able to get back in front. All right, so those are the things we're working on here, and you'll see um, kind of how this goes here. Let me just turn this volume off. Okay. Um, so, again, you have 
We have the offensive. I'm pointing at the screen like you guys can see me. But you have the offensive guy right here at the ball. The defensive guy kind of starts behind him. We put an offensive guy in the corner. We put an offensive guy here in the wing. Okay. So basically what we're working on, we're, we're really, the, the, we're working on two things. We're working on this guy, loud, aggressive, making the right read here. Maybe this guy gets back in front and he doesn't need the help. All right. Because we don't want to help for no reason and then give up an open three. All right. But whatever this guy has to do, he has to do it aggressive because that, what he does dictates what the second defender does. All right. So we're teaching this guy loud, aggressive, outside the lane, use your voice, you know, have a presence. And we're teaching this guy to drop. All right. Protect the rim. And ideally, you know, pick up the first pass here. All right, so we'll watch it here. So we have a drive. He's loud, aggressive, hands up. Again, a little stage, probably a little far out, further out than he needs to be. But he's doing what we want him to do. He's, he's big, he's aggressive, he's loud. And that, that's very clear that this guy has to drop here. Okay? And now after that, it's just kind of a scramble. All right, so this guy has the ball. And now it's on these two guys to figure out a way to talk. And, and recover and, and contest a shot and not give up an open three. And again, it's not going to be perfect every time. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it might be this guy running here, this guy running to the corner. It, it might get changed, but, okay, we, we kind of go back to that term. I said we were trying to get these guys to just put out fires, okay? Probably could have been a little more of a contested shot. That's, our, that's actually our best three-point shooter that shot it. All right, but, okay, we got the big, strong, aggressive help. We got the guy to drop, and then we got the guy to talk and scramble. And that's really what we're working on on this drill. All right, so, again, the guy's on his hip. Drive, big, aggressive help. He realizes, okay, like, the defender got back in front. I can get back to mine. Okay, I'm just going to rewind that real quick. All right, because we do talk about this, too. Like, our big guy here, he does a good job. The, the, this guy gets back in front. He realizes, okay, I, I start to help. I don't need to. I make my little stunt, and now I can get back. And now we just play defense. Okay. Someone asked me this in the last clinic that I did. Do we, do we talk? What, what do we do on ball screens? Because you'll see a bunch of switches here. Our basic rule on ball screens is don't get hit by the screen. So we really put an emphasis on the on ball defender to try to get up and over, especially in high school. We don't think guys do a really good job setting ball screens and getting good contact. So we say, if you don't get hit by the screen, there's no screen. And this instance here, um, he does a bad job. He drops to the level of the screen, which we don't want the guys to do. But, you know, our, our last resort on ball screens is a switch, which they do a good job up here. They talk and do it. And we're fine with that, right? If we get nailed on the ball screen, we talk it and we switch it. Okay? Um, again, that's not an ideal one. We don't want a, a guard to be switched on a, on a, on a big. Um, but it happens. And, 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 and they do the best, best they can to, uh, to, to get a stop. Um, last one here, again, guy gets B. We have big aggressive help, okay? Probably could have been a little more aggressive on the help there to make that a tougher pass, all right? But, again, we have the, the low guy gets the ball here, and then we're scrambling around to try to get a stop. And, and again, it's not perfect, I don't think. I don't think it's like the way every coach in the world would draw it up. But we're rewarding the kids when they make good, tough plays and they, and they don't let, give up a score. Um, last one here. Good, good aggressive help. Scramble, contest a shot, good box out, and go get the ball. So that's our three and three help and recover drill. All right, next is our four and four jump to the ball. All right, so four and four jump to the ball. Um, no shooting in this drill. It's, again, real basic. Everybody probably does it in practice, but um, 45 seconds from the clock. Each team goes twice. The offense is, you know, you start in the corners and on the wings. Offense is just pass, cut, go opposite. Defense is jumping the ball, jumping to the ball, and not allowing a face cut. Okay, early on when we put this drill in, every time there's a face cut, we just blow the whistle and we, we reset the 45 seconds. And it gets to a point where they're just sick of it. They're holding each other accountable, which is great. You know, we, I think we talk about that as coaches a lot. It's like, how do we get our guys to hold each other accountable? Well, when you're, when you're in there playing defense, and you'll see some of these other drills that we do, and you're, you're the one that's kind of letting the team down and you're, you know, your teammates dead tired and doesn't want to be in there anymore. Eventually you're going to say, come on, man, we need you to like dig in and get the style. You're going to hold each other accountable. All right. That's, that's another good thing about these drills. But again, 45 seconds in the clock, jump to the ball, um, base card, we reset the clock here. All right. So real simple here. Whistle blows. All right. You hear them. Guys are talking too. 
All right, if guys aren't talking, I talked about that before. That's another reason we'll just reset the clock. So talk about how do you get your team to t talk? Don't let them get out of the drill until they talk. All right. And some of these, some of these are um, a little later in the year, some of these practices. Um, so we're just trying, trying to kind of, again, keep our identity here and, and make sure the kids are doing the right thing, get into the helpline, jump into the ball, yell them ball. Um, but, you know, we just kind of stick with them every day and, and, and the guys, uh, you know, the, guy, the guys get it, and, and they're not going to allow face cuts, and uh, they're not going to want to be the ones to let the teammates down. Um, next one, I, I love this drill. It's a four-on-four -four disadvantage shell. Um, so it starts just like that jump to the ball drill. You know, the guys will be jumping to the ball, cutting opposite. Um, offense is, you know, pass, cut, go opposite. Defensive player jump to the ball, get to the help line. At some point, I'll stage it, um, so I'll blow the whistle. Whenever I blow the whistle, the defender that's on the ball has to just be out of the play. So you just kind of sprint three steps out of the play. The offensive player straight line drives it, and um, and and the defense has to help him recover. All right. So it, again, it's staged. It's a little unrealistic. I don't think um, you know. Obviously, we're not trying to give up these straight line drives in games, but it puts the kids at a disadvantage and it, it puts them in a situation where they kind of have to figure it out. Um, the one rule we really emphasize here is we emphasize uh, helping from the weak side low man. All right, and I'll show you this video um, of what we do here. So it starts, again, we're jumping to the ball. All right, we, we you know, we put a big emphasis on, like, uh, on help, getting to the line. And you see the whistle blows. All right, so this guy's out of the play now. This is a straight line drive, all right? So again, we'll, we'll put a big emphasis on uh, weak side low guy. So that's this guy right here. He's a weak side low guy. Early on when we do this, we always kind of get the tendency that this guy wants to step in and help. So we're always correcting that early on, but they eventually get, okay, it's a weak side low guy. I can't strong side help. I can stunt and get back right here. Um, and you'll see now we talk about charges, basically, in practice for us, if you if you try to take a charge and you get any sort of contact, um, we're going to give it to you. And, and for this drill, like this four on four disadvantage shell, we'll say that like you got to get three stops to get out. Again, we will change it up. If we we, we, we want to be tough on them, we'll say you got to get three stops in a row. And or we'll say you know maybe it's late late in the year and we'll say okay you just got to get two to get out. But as a coach, you can nitpick this as, as hard as you want. So like. If, if you want them to, you know, if you're early on, you're building your defense, you know, when we were doing that, we were just blow the whistle for everything. You know, we have a coach here, we have coaches here, we have coaches on the sideline, and everybody would just, like, say, okay, not talking enough, not a stop. Okay, uh, didn't help hard enough, not a stop. Not a good enough shot contest. Thought you didn't box out hard enough. And you can just nitpick everything and just keep them in there for 15, 20 minutes and have them in there playing defense, grinding it out. Um but anyway, that's my point about charges. So you'll see our guys in practice. They're like programmed because they know if they take a charge and there's any contact at all, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt in practice. Um, so you'll see my man right here. He gives two uh, kind of funny charge attempts here. But, again, he's like there. He's ready to take it. There's no contact. He falls. But he, like, gets back up, and he's, like, ready to take another one. Um, and, again, the premise of this drill is um, to help recover and then finish the play. All right, so we're, we're trying to get that weak, weak side uh, low guy to help. Um, but other than that, we're really not putting a ton of rules on it. All right, this is our big guy, you know, 6'8 big guy, and, and he's, he, he brought into it. He's a senior this year. Um, but, you know, you see him, and then they get excited about getting stops. Like, the whole point of this is, like, let's get our guys to be excited about playing defense and believe that if, if they can stop teams, they can win games. Um, so you'll see at some point here, we're moving. I can set it up if I want to see someone help. We blow the whistle. Okay, this guy probably helps a little too much here, uh, but he gets he gets back. All right, and then you'll see our coach under the rim here, Coach Hickey. Um, he's going he's gonna to call a charge. It's automatic in practice. And, he, again, even if it's not a charge, there's kind of not a ton of contact. Um, you know, the guys try it, and I have some clips, at, some game clips at the end where you'll see us taking a ton of charges. So I think if you reward the kids in practice by giving them the benefit of the doubt, you know, it's going to make them do it in the game.
any help. All right, probably should have, this guy probably should have helped lower. All right, they got bailed out because the kid didn't throw a great pass or pass to the right guy. Um, but now they, they get recovered. Now you're straight four on four. All right, and they're playing um, until they get a stop. And sometimes you get rewarded with some bad offense, which helps. <laughs> um, all right, so next one, our fatigue shell. Another one I really like, because um, this is a, another mental, uh, you know, test of your will. So four on four shell, you just check the ball and it's live right from the start. Uh, but the way this works is, again, we'll, we'll say whatever we want here. We'll say, okay, you got to get three stops to get out. You got to get three in a row. You got to get two. You know, we kind of pick whatever our team needs for the day. And anytime you give up a score, anytime you give up an offensive rebound, anytime you don't talk, anytime you make what we call a defensive mistake, the defense gets on the baseline, they're running up and back, and then the next team, offensive team is on the court waiting for them. So they run their up and back, they get back, and they have to close out and play defense. And, and, and again, this is a drill that we can take and say, okay, we want to be hard on them today. So we'll um, – We'll nitpick, we'll say, you know, if we, we'll just say, oh, not loud enough on defense, not talking loud enough, up and back. And, and I'll guarantee that, like, next time they come down, they're going to be louder on defense. So they don't want to run for not being loud enough. Or if they don't close out hard enough, or if they're not playing hard enough, tough enough on the ball. So, um, you know, and again, you get to a point with these drills where, you know, obviously we, we lead it, we dictate it, we kind of set the, set the tone for it. But as you see the teams get caught in there, you see the kids holding each other accountable, which is great. Because um, the less we have to kind of hold them accountable, I think the better. Um, you don't want to, you, you get your team to a mindset where I don't want to let my teammate down. I think you're in a pretty good place. So it's a great drill, four and four fatigue shell. Um, and, 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 you know, you're getting your conditioning in. And, you know, you, sometimes you get teams in there, they'll do 15 up and backs, and they'll be in there for 20 minutes um, before they get out. And, and as a, as a team, you get better on defense when you play defense for 20 minutes straight. Um, and so I really like that one. It's one that we do, I would say, every few days in practice. We don't do this one every day. But when we, when we need to have a tough day, we'll go to this one. All right. Uh, phase three here is our rebounding. Um, obviously, we have our individual defense on the ball, which is great. Uh, we have our team defense. And, and the third aspect of this is we need to go get the ball. So when I was at Quinnipiac, we were a really, really, really good rebounding team. We were big, physical, and Coach Moore did a great job of um, creating our um, identity of being a tough, tough team. Um, and that was done in practice. So these are a couple of drills that we used to do there um, that we slightly modify for our kids, but they're very similar to what we did when I was at Quinnipiac. Um, so first one, again, everybody's done this. It's two on two box. Um, two lines at the elbows. Uh, so the two first guys in line are up, you know, I'll be at the free throw line with the basketball. Uh, you become a really great shot misser when you become a coach. Uh, you take pride on the ball bouncing up on the rim. Uh, so I'll shoot it, and the first two guys will box out. Uh, the next two guys in line will go after the offensive rebound. Uh, and if you get a rebound, you have to outlet it or it doesn't count. And if the offense scores, they just keep scoring until the defense gets the ball. So it's, it's, it works on a lot of things. It works on, you know, your, your hit, pivot, box out, pursuing the ball. Um, it works on your will, again, like if you're caught in there 10 times in a row, um, pushing each other, you know, just find a way to get the rebound. Uh, the one thing we do in these drills, these rebounding drills, is they obviously get pretty physical. Um, and, and we, again, we want to do these as the year goes on. We want to keep with them. Uh, but we don't want guys to get hurt. You know, we're obviously trying to preserve our body. So we don't allow the kids. We say the rules are you can't push in the back. So we're telling the offensive guy that's going after the offensive rebound, you could, you know, spin. You can fake one way, go the other way. Um, you know, you can, you can do anything besides. We don't want anybody pushing anybody in the back to go get the ball. So and other than that, it's just fair game. And then they're playing two on two. And, and, and you get defender, you have to figure out a way to get out of it. All right, uh, next one's our four and four box. So we'll do our shell spots, uh, two corners, two wings. I'll be at the top of the key with the ball. Offense, uh, we'll just move the ball around. So I'll throw it to the corner. So you have your guy in the ball. You have your guy one pass away. You have your weak side low guy on the line. You have your weak side wing guy on the line. 
Um, so they have to kind of move as the ball moves. And then we'll, we'll, we'll swing it around the perimeter, um, you know, for 30 seconds or so, making sure they're in the right spots. Eventually the ball comes back to me. I'll shoot it. You have to run out, hit, box out, go get the ball, outlet it. Um, again, we'll do, you know, three, three, you got to get three to get out, um, two to get out, three in a row, whatever we're feeling like we need that day. But one thing we have done with this drill, if we really want to be tough on it, is we'll, we'll do our fatigue box. So just like our fatigue shell, we'll say, okay, you give up an offensive rebound, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll let the offensive score, offensive team score until the defense can get the ball. Then we'll have the defensive team get on the baseline. We'll have them do their up and back. We'll have them close out, and we'll have them, you know, do another one. And, you know, I, I might shoot it right away. The offensive team might get the rebound because the defense is now tired from doing an up and back. And we'll be back on the baseline doing an up and back again. Um, so just a, another toughness drill, another drill that works on, um, you know, hitting, going after the ball, and just figuring out a way to, like, make, make it happen, make it work. Um, so it's not always going to be perfect in a game. So those are our drills. Again, if anybody has any questions, Adam, I know there's a few uh, questions here in the chat that I'm going to get to in a minute here. Um, I'm, ha I'm happy to talk about them more. I, I'm, I apologize. I wish I had more film. Or, you know, we're, we're getting better here um, with, with our camera. We use Huddle, uh, but we don't always have managers there to film practice for us. So um, I wish I had more film. But if anybody has any questions or wants some more details on anything, let me know. And these are just some clips um, I put together from our team from this year. Um, so, you know, this game's against Hill House. At this point, Hill House had not lost the game all year. Um, this was like a turning point in us. Anybody that knows uh, Connecticut High School basketball knows Hill House is, you know, Hill House is like the, I don't know, the San Antonio Spurs of, of Connecticut High School basketball. They're good every year. Um, they were 18 and 2 this year, and they were fifth in the state. And, and we were at this point, we were 2 and 5. Uh, no, we were two and six at this point, I believe, or maybe three and six, whatever it was. And we won this game, and this is what really turned our whole season around. Because I think the kids started to believe in, man, if we could beat Hill House by playing good, tough defense, we could beat anybody. So um, you'll see here again. It's not perfect here, but we weren't we weren't making this rotation early in the year. So you'll see this guy. All right, we do a good job on the ball screen. You'll see this guy's here, ready to take this, uh, ready to make this play. And then this guy drops here to make the next play. And that's stuff we weren't doing early in the year. I think that's just a product of us working on that stuff. And literally an hour and 45 minutes a day in practice. Um, this is one of my favorite plays because this is kind of like this kid's um, I and mean, we're going to miss him next year. I, I, I was lucky enough to coach him for two years. He's going to play uh, lacrosse at Loyola in Maryland. Unbelievable athlete, football, basketball, lacrosse, um, captain in all three. Uh, but, I mean, you just watch him here. He guards a kid up the sideline, and it's a, it's a fast side second call, but guards him up the sideline, pressures him across the court, pressures him 25 feet from the hoop, and we get a five-second call. I think that was a little bit of a home court call, but we'll, we'll, we'll take it. Um, another play here, um, you'll see our defense, our guys are, like, dying to help. We have two guys, like, fighting over there to take the charge. Um, and, and, and again, that's not, those aren't rotations we were making early in the year. You know, we, we have this philosophy too with, you know, with the charge thing, I think if, if a ref sees a kid make a good, tough, hard play, especially at the high school level, um, our, you know, we think they're going to give, give the defender the benefit of the doubt. Again, guy gets beat here, step up. I mean, he just takes it in the chest. It's the same kid. I mean, it's ridiculous. He's, that's the kid that's going to play lacrosse at, uh, Loyola. Um, Probably not a good call there again, but you know we we create this mindset with our kids like like try to take it, let the ref make that decision. Uh, this game's against Notre Dame and West Haven here. They had a great team this year. They were like top four in the state all year. Um, but again, you, you know you see our rotations, guys drive our big guy. This is uh, for those that uh, follow college basketball. This is uh, this big guy here is uh, Pat Harding's uh, younger brother. Um, and he just had a, ended up having a great year for us. But you see him there. I mean, he wasn't making this play early in the year. He's, like, off his man. He's, like, there. He's active. His hands are up. He's, like, clearly making the offensive guy hesitate. You know, we, we end up getting a travel out of it. Um, 
And, and this is like, this is all stuff that, again, we weren't doing. We were two and five for a reason. And this is stuff we weren't doing um, when, when we were two and five. But you see, I mean, they, Notre Dame, they run good stuff, and our guys just kind of blow, blow it up, which is great. Uh, make them take the test shot and then go get the ball. So, um, so yeah, so that's all um, I have. I'm going to get to the questions here. We only we got like 13 minutes before the next speaker. So this is my email. Um, if anybody has any questions about the drill, feel, feel free to email me. I mean, I know they're pretty basic, and I know um, a lot of you guys have probably attended clinics that have some uh, some more complex stuff, but uh, this, uh, you know, if you have any questions about the drills we did, I think they really worked for our team and they helped us create this identity that we wanted to create. I'm, I'm proud of it. And, and from, from day one next year, like I said in the beginning, I made the mistake of waiting. Um, you know, we'll be doing those drills from day one and the kids know it and the kids believe in it now. Uh, so I'm going to stop my share here. Um, I'm going to go into the Q and a, a couple questions. Uh, one-on-one half-court box, is it, is it done with a timer? Um, no. Ideally, we'll throw, we'll throw a time. We throw a time on the clock for every drill just so I have a concept of what's going on and how long you've been doing stuff in practice. Um, to answer the question, we don't do it with a timer because we're not stopping until everybody gets three stops. So we're not going to, you know, we're not going to hold it. If there's 10 minutes on the clock, we're not going to hold it to, uh, to 10 minutes. We're going to... Uh, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to stay in there until everybody gets their three stops and gets out. Uh, next question, four and four, disadvantage shell. Um, yeah, three, the question was, you, you do three stops to get out. Yeah, and usually, usually the magic number is always three. Honestly, the kids kind of know they have to get three to get out. Um, you know, again, we, we mix it up based on, based on the day. And, uh, you know, if we... Uh, if we want to keep them in there longer, we keep them in there longer. If we don't want them in there, we, uh, you know, we won't, we won't, uh, we won't, we'll, we'll do one or two. So it depends on the day, but usually it's three stops to get out. Uh, two on two box. So if the offense scores, they can get the ball again and keep scoring until the defense secures it. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, so the, uh, the offensive team, they, they have uh, free reign. So they can do whatever they, uh, do whatever they want to do. Um, until the defense gets the ball. They just play two-on-two. Two. Uh, we kind of are telling them, hey, man, work on your offense. Play two-on-two. Two, try to score over and over and over again. And we get excited when guys do that but because um, we, we want them to push each other. But, yeah, the offensive scores until the defense can, can secure the ball. Uh, yeah, good question. Okay, so do you have a um, – do you have a preference of forcing the ball sideline, baseline, middle, or toe-to-toe? Um, so yes, ideally I'd like to keep the ball on the sideline, but I don't emphasize it too much. We talk about it a little bit. Um, again, my, my big thing is I don't really care what you do if you keep the ball out of the lane. Like if you, if you play good defense, um, and, and, and good hard nosed man to man defense and keep the ball out of the lane, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think if you put too much emphasis on, on one thing or the other, um, the kids start like almost like cheating it and doing it too much. So they're almost giving up. Like, for example, if we're saying it has to go sideline, it has to go sideline, it has to go sideline. Now we're just like, we're almost like giving them a sideline. So I, I try not to do that as a coach. Like we definitely talk about it. Like I'll say, like the term I use is we're going to dictate it to the sideline. Like we're not going to, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to square you up. We're going to play you. Um, we're going to try to dictate you, you know, maybe our, you know, our, our, our right foot if we're on the right side is up so we can force it to the right, uh, right sideline just slightly, but I don't want to give up. I don't want to give up sideline. I want to, I want to be tough on the ball. I just want to keep the ball out of the lane. So ideally to answer the question, yeah, we, we want to force the side, sideline, um, but I'm not putting a huge emphasis on it. I'm not being like a jerk in practice if a guy, you know, drives the ball from the right wing to the free throw line. Cause I don't think that's bad defense. Like if you can, if you can, contain the ball at the free throw line and, and make him take a contested pull up there. I'm good with that. Even if he kind of drives it to the middle. So I don't know if I really answered it, but, um, you know, bottom line is just keep the ball out of the lane for us. Uh, last question here. Um, I can look into this. Someone asked, actually shoot me an email for this one uh, about holiday tournaments in the area. Um, we, we play in one uh, in Fairfield, but it's with three other Fairfield schools, but, 
I can definitely look into other ones in Connecticut if, uh, if you're looking for one in Connecticut. So, okay. All right, well, that is the end of my talk.